Hello, this is Randy with a random Linux review. This is Fedora desktop, but this is the ARM version. I'm actually using this because I am testing this on a virtual machine running in parallels on an M2 2023 Mac. So our MacBook Pro, I'll be more specific on that. Let's, I just, you know, log in. I've already done that, but let's open up like updates and see things like that for the first time. <laughs> you can see that I accidentally moved my desktop because I am inside of an operating system. I'm inside of Mac OS, which is kind of weird. The gestures on the touchpad are going to trigger the Mac OS stuff. But you can see how fast this is running inside a virtual machine. I run this on my personal laptop and it's just incredible. Fedora is amazing. Ever, you know, for the last couple of years, uh, I've become a fan. I am still a fan of Linux Mint, but Fedora just, just, they just kill it, man. So in a moment, I'm going to install some updates. These are right out of the box. This is like the biggest update you'll do. And unless you're doing like an upgrade, but being that you're updating to the latest packages all the time with a release or a distribution like Fedora, you won't have big updates like this ever again. This is going to be the longest update and I'm going to do it just live anyways, because it's so fast. So we'll install these 61 updates. That's including Firefox and all the apps that come stock and it will reboot. You'll see my Mac OS desktop probably. And look at that. It's already ready to restart and install the updates. So here we go. Take a sip of coffee. There is my Road Connect. You can see that's the software I'm using to record this audio. Come on, jump. Of course, when I say that, that's when it's going to take its longest. <laughs> there it goes. And here we are. We have a fully updated computer. Every possible aspect that needs to be updated is up to date. And here we are. So now there are no updates. So what should I do first? Well, let's go to, wow, this is smooth, even in a virtual machine. We're going to go through some of the basic apps. Now, GNOME is known for, well, this KDE 39 using GNOME. Uh, I forget what version it is, 44, 41, I don't even remember. It's very simple. It's meant to be simple. It's like the Mac OS, I've heard people say, of Linux desktops. And I, I agree. It's, it's probably even a little bit simpler. Oops, can't click on this. There we go. I like a view like this. Um, it's just easier to see a lot more stuff at once. I feel like the folders are beautiful in that icon view that I just had, but it's a little clunky. Yes, you can, you know, you can <laughs> move stuff around on accident like I just did. Oops, oops, I, I'm breaking all my folders. It doesn't matter. It's a virtual machine. You can go here and you can revert to a, uh, you know, take a snapshot, revert to it. That's the cool thing about virtual machines. But anyways, we're going to unmount the ISO that we installed by just clicking that little arrow. As you can see, there's no BS, no errors like you might get in Windows fairly often. I tend to get those in Windows a lot. It wasn't ejected properly. Then the next time you use the USB, you got to scan it for errors. You, you've probably been there. So let's open up some apps. Let's try Firefox. See how fast it launches on the first launch. Perfectly fine. I have been growing into a Firefox fan again. It's like the 90s have called again, and or the early 2000s at least, and I'm back. I like Firefox a lot. I can sign into the sync service, and I feel much more confident that they're not spying on me as much as Google is anyway. So I'm going to sign in with my email. And you'll see how fast this loads. And I get an alert on my phone immediately that this browser is signing in. Get all my plugins or extensions loading up. If you want to take note of the ones I use, these are great. I find them to be very useful. Um, so yeah, it does put in a few default bookmarks that will go in on top of your imported bookmarks, but you can just delete them. So whatever, it's up to you. And okay, cool. So very, very simple. Not a whole lot going on here, but that's the beauty of it. 
you can kind of just go to the app store and start finding some really cool apps. And I think that this app store, as I'm going to call it, is very polished and makes me feel more inclined to install things. It's just simple. It's fast. Uh, another thing that I would recommend doing after you install Fedora 39 for the first time is to go and look up DNF5 and install that. Now, DNF is the package manager for Fedora Linux, but DNF5 wasn't included because I think it wasn't ready yet, and they want it to be very stable. But using it, it's much faster than the regular DNF. So let me show you what I mean. DNF5 install. So we're going to go here and right there for Fedora 39, they already have it. Okay, so we're going to scroll down. I, I recognize the command when I see it because... Uh, DNF upgrade, yes. Yep, that's... Oh, for some reason I thought I had to import stuff. Control shift v enter, type in the password. I don't recommend typing Y or getting into that habit unless you're really certain you want to install something and skip the prompt to do it, but that's just, I don't know, from a security standpoint, that's bad practice in my opinion, but... In this case, we know DNF5, and it's going to install from a good source, but I just, in general, don't recommend that behavior. Wow, look how much faster that is. Audacity, like it shows, even though I hate that program nowadays. Let's see how fast it goes. Holy cow. <laughs> that, that was incredible. Okay. Let's check it out. Is it there? That, uh, that <laughs> installed in like two seconds. <laughs> so it's doing some kind of parallel downloading or something. I mean, that's incredible. But I did get a crash warning. And that has happened before in GNOME, even though it's a stable desktop. I don't know, man. I don't have this happen in like Cinnamon Linux as much. Okay, GIMP is a pretty good size. Yeah, 288. Here we go. Oh my God. That is incredible. In a virtual machine, not even on bare bones hardware. That that is that is amazing. I mean, even the flat pack doesn't install that fast. It handling virtual machines like I believed it would be. I have a license for Parallels. It is very expensive. I bought the one-time purchase version 19. Oh my, it's pricey. But I'm not stuck with having to upgrade every year and reporting back to them. I like that they still sell this one-time license, which is fair. So I'll pay the extra money. It's like I think it was like 20 or $30 more than the other version, which is, in my opinion, way worth it. All right, well, let's see if there's anything else that's worth checking out because, like I said, it's very simple. Let's see what kind of resources we're using right now because I have Firefox open, and it's very efficient with memory. Okay, and I was wrong on how much memory I thought it would take to you know, use for the virtual machine, and it's running this well. Blows my mind completely. Two gigabytes of RAM. So like modern operating systems, Windows, if you have like 16 gigs of RAM, it will tend to take up like half of it pretty easily, but it, it can do really well when it runs out of that RAM because the components inside are so fast. I think it can swap very quickly. You got NVMe drives, you got, these things are very quick. So it's not a big emergency when you run low on RAM like it used to be. It used to be your computer would just be crushed. It would be so slow and you have to upgrade your RAM. Not so much nowadays. As you can see here, I thought I had 8 gigs of RAM in this thing. And nope, 2. <laughs> but another 2 of swap. But again, the swap can act as RAM, especially now on these modern systems with such tiny processors. Circuitry is just, you got, you got more juice flowing <laughs> uh, through the, uh, more megahertz in the RAM, if you know what I'm saying. You got like 3200 megahertz RAM and all that crap. It's, it's just incredible. My mind's blown that on two gigs of RAM, it's running this well and that fast. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned some interesting facts 
I hope you learned some interesting things about Linux and have a great day.